What's up, people? It's your man, Urban Lover, coming from your mama's basement, baby. And I want to talk about this new pickup that we got, E. Jinlin. Now, a lot of people in the comment section was hitting me up a while back. They was like, uh, Urban, what's up with this new pickup? You know, there's a rumor going on that, you know, the Lakers are interested in this individual dude. Well, eventually, it came to pass. They wound up picking him up for $8 million. Now, a lot of people probably don't know nothing about him. A lot of guys probably just were born yesterday, you know. So, I'm going to have to make sure I talk to the infants, you know, to let them know about this guy. Now, before he got drafted, he was just as big as Yao Ming in China. You know, the fan base was crazy about him. They were comparing him to Kevin Garnett. He both came over here, I think, in 06, I believe. 05, something like that. But what happened was... He didn't want to come because he felt though at that time that his skill level wasn't up to par to the NBA level. So he wound up picking up an agent named Dan Fagan. And he wound up getting drafted by Milwaukee at number 6. Now Dan Fagan tried so hard to get this guy traded from Milwaukee because of the because it was a small marketing team. Now the one thing about him is this. He actually went to New Jersey. He had a good stink in New Jersey. He actually played pretty good for 37 games where he wound up averaging... 10 points, uh, 6 boards before he got hurt once again. Um, he played in the league, I believe, like 5 years. The only biggest problem is yet injuries. you know. And now he's labeled as a bust because he didn't actually live up to his potential. But at the end of the day, I want to say this. You name me a good 7-footer that has not been plagued with injuries. Mostly knee injuries. A lot of 7-footers, after a while, those knees start giving out on him. And that was like the biggest problem with him. Now, with that being said, the guy, when he came into the NBA, you could see potential in him. One of the potentials he does as a 7 foot is that he can put the ball on the floor. He has a nice touch on his jumper. He can hit the three. He has a nice quick right side dribble move to the basket. He can finish nicely around the rim, mostly with dunks or layups, but most you'll see is dunks. And he's not afraid to contest the shot. He's, he's pretty good in the uh, defensive blocking scheme. Now, back in um, 2015, the Lakers actually went after him, but he turned them down at the time because there wasn't enough money. A good portion of the Chinese fan base was pissed off because they wanted him to come to the NBA to showcase his skills. Eventually, his agent must have talked some sense to him that, you know, that was his best opportunity for him. So the Lakers scout probably showed interest in him from watching him in the Olympics this year. And they got a chance to see this guy play. And plus, they know some of it because Luke Walton actually played in the NBA, probably played against him as well. So they know what he can do. The only problem is that he's plagued with injuries. So eventually, this is actually a marketing strategy where a lot of people fail to realize. Like I said before, China has one of the largest NBA fan base. The NBA is not just based in the USA. It's based all around the globe. And this is a good marketing strategy, business strategy for the front office of LA. The only sad part, the only sad part that I want to say is this. Where does Tariq Black fit into all this? As you notice, he still have a contract on the table which hadn't been signed yet. Now that we just picked up E and we got Zoo Block and Ma's government, where does Tariq Black fit in? Because the whole thing that people fail to realize is this. E can play the power forward and the center. And now because the NBA is kind of running small ball, but some people are going back to the, the traditional type of way of playing with the big man center. He still can play center at his height and weight, which is not bad for you know, this guy. The thing is, he's going to get minutes, not a lot. He's going to get a little bit of minutes. Because that's the one thing that he had a problem with when he was in the NBA. Uh, when he was playing with, I think, the Bucks, His his agent was complaining that he wasn't getting enough minutes. I think it, was, I think it might have been New Jersey. That he wasn't getting enough minutes. I think his first year with New Jersey. And he said that if he get more minutes, he'll play much better. So that was his biggest thing. He wanted more minutes. But you got to also keep in mind, at that time, he was young. He was like... 19, 21, something like that. So he was still young, you know. And like I said, when young guys in the NBA, they still have a lot to grow as in maturingness. So I can see, like, like the thing is, the Lakers pick him up to me. I like it, to be honest with you. And the reason why, because after Zoo Block and Miles Government, there's no other height on that team. I mean, we got, what, three guys at 6'9". But the thing about it is this. If Miles government get hurt as he did so far in the Olympics, who do we have, you know, besides Zublock? And if Zublock get hurt, who do we have to come play center? 
you can't play Julius Randle and Larry Nance as center every game because of the matchups. So the Lakers, to be honest with you, that move is actually thinking more further in debt of the team and height-wise because that's what we're actually hurting at. Like Mitch Kupchak said earlier, a while back in during the season, he said that he wanted to get stronger up front. Well, not during the season, but after the season, he said he wanted to get more stronger up front with some more height, you know, to play more on the block and stuff like that. So I, I totally understand why they went and got this guy. And like I said, look at our backcourt. Our backcourt is, is extremely small. So you got to get some players in there with some height. And plus, on top of that, there was a rumor that came out that the Lakers were also looking at Jaleel Okafor before this um, move took place. I didn't actually make a video on it because I knew that it was a rumor and I knew that it wasn't going to fly. Because it's like these reporters want so hard to trade D'Angelo Russell. I mean, they it's just like, I, like I said, I know they're looking for something to write about, something to give you guys to talk about and stuff like that. But it's crazy. And at the end of the day, I already knew that the Lakers weren't going to make a move on Jaleel Okafor. And this right here already proved my point by them picking up him. So I kind of like him. And the reason why I like him because, once again, Luke Walton's triangle motion offense that's going to be favorite for DeAndre Russell as he utilized big men in it. It's going to be good for a guy like him because why he can shoot. Spread the floor. That's the whole point of them picking it, picking him up. That's why it's, it's kind of crazy because I, now I'm thinking like, are they going to go in with the deal with Tariq Black? I mean, they said that he's going to promise him minutes, but the thing about it is that when when Walton said this about promising Tariq Black minutes, he didn't get to see how Zubak, Zublock play, played. So when Zublock came out in the Summer League and and played pretty good, his mindset probably changed. You know, he probably say, well, you know, do we really still need Tariq Black? So then they went out picking up this guy. And also, like I said, another reason why they pick up E2 is not just a marketing strategy, but it's also insurance in case Ma's government get hurt. Because if he get hurt, all we got is Zoo Block. And then we don't have nobody else in height. You know, Tariq Black, like I said, he's only 6'9", and he's really a power forward. And the only time he'll probably play, play decent to me is actually when you go small ball. Because you get somebody like Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, somebody with some height on him. You know, he might not be able to stand his ground against some guys. But I'm not going to criticize Black based on the fact that I didn't really get to see much of his game. You know, the Lakers didn't play him a lot. And the teams that he played on didn't play him a lot as well. And since this is a semi-rebuilding year and a fresh start for everybody, you know, we got a new coach. You know, most of these players are going to want to try their best to showcase their skill set this year. So that's the reason why I say that, you know, give the other guys a shot too. You know, just don't look at one group and just basically totally forget about the other group. Everybody get a chance because some of these guys can be utilized in some trade packages. Instead of just letting money go away for free, you know, this is a basically a, a good year for us to get a chance to see what we got. And then we can make trades like, for instance, if we just keep Nick Young, you know, resign Tariq Black. We can actually put them in a trade and trade them off for something else better, like a, a, a draft pick or something, you know, a second rounder or whatever it may be. So we can utilize some of these players in trademark, trade opportunities. But in order to do that, we got to play them. You know, there's nobody wanting to come to L.A., so we got to showcase this year as a year where we can show that we we belong. Simple as that. But at the end of the day, it is a business, and I have to respect all the moves that they make and at least let them play out before I make a big evaluation on this team, which I will do this upcoming season. Now, I kind of like this guy. I kind of forgot about him. It had been a while. But at the end of the day, when he came over here, like I said, he got injured due to his injuries. He wasn't all that um, he's he panned out to be. And people saw a label of bus and all that. So after five years, he went back to China. And over there in China, they still love this guy. And now that the Lakers actually got him now, the thing is that he's going to bring a large fan base with him. So that's, a, that's an A-plus on the Lakers picking him up because now they're actually going to be rebuilding up their brand since after Kobe retired. So with them rebuilding up their brand and they bringing this guy over from China, he's going to bring that large fan base with him. And this guy is just as big as Kobe over there in China. So that's a good move by the Lakers organization. And most likely he's going to probably play center based on the fact that um, he got five years over Zublock. I would love to see Zublock, you know, back up Maz government. But, you know, they probably have um, E playing back up to Maz government for the simple fact of experience. Zublock doesn't have none, so they're probably going to bring Zublock slowly along, which is beautiful. I don't mind. Now, the thing about it is that he's definitely going to be playing backup center, and he probably plays some stint at power forward. Also, on that, they also can have Ingram playing the two and the three. They can have Larry Nance playing the, the center, the power forward, and the small forward position. So, right now, the ball's in Luke Walton's hand. You know, he can do whatever he want to do with this squad. 
He can mix and match it, match it up against whatever team he's playing that night. So there's a lot that he can do with this team. And it's beautiful to see that he's actually having a better look at it with the dynamic of what he's got. Because at the end of the day, I was thinking, like, we're going to need another big man. But I was saying, like, you know, even though we got Zublock and Miles Government, we still need a big man. Because after that, everybody else is 6'9 and, and below. If one of these guys get hurt, we, we screwed. So kudos to the, the Lakers front office for getting this guy and making that move. Um, I know a lot of people say $8 million. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you got to think about it. He's bringing a large fan base with him. So they're going to make way more money in marketing and offer this guy based you know, more than what they gave him for the $8 million. So don't even look at the $8 million. But they definitely going to give him some playing time because that's the whole point of him actually signing back over here because he wanted playing time. So kudos to those guys. Now I want y'all guys to get in the comment session and tell me is this a good move for the Lakers or a bad move for the Lakers? What you think was happen? What's going to happen to Tariq Black? So with that being said, it's your man Urban Lover. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, be safe out there. I love you guys. Take care.